When you've lost your job, one of the most important things to take care of, the most important thing to take care of is you. It's not an easy time, even in the best of circumstances. And joining me now is Deanna Lawson Langford. She is a life coach who specializes in wellness. Deanna, thank you for sharing your insight and experience with everybody. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me to have the opportunity to, you know, maybe help make things a little bit easier for folks in this really hard time. Yes. Now, taking care of uh, themselves, what mm -hmm. should people be doing to take care of themselves mm -hmm. and how they're operating in these times? Yeah, I think, you know, there's a number of things. So as you mentioned, I do specialize in wellness and I specialize in self-care and the self-care component is really important to remember. It is not about bubble baths and it's not about manicures, although for some people that might be part of their plan. Um, but what I invite people to think about is first, First and foremost, be kind to yourself. This is a really hard time that people are going through. So if, you know, if we're feeling really low, if we're feeling, you know, emotional, let yourself be in that space for a little bit. And then next ask, you know, what could I do just to shift things a little bit? So, you know, I often talk about sort of seven pillars of self-care and those are things, some of them are really easy to, to add in your day. So hydration, for example, you know, it is definitely something that falls by the wayside, especially if you've been used to going to a workplace or you've had a schedule or anything like that. When your schedule changes, often your hydration changes at work, you've got your glass on the desk and you can, you know, and that might be something that you're not noticing, but um, it can take an impact on how you're feeling mentally and physically. So starting with hydration, um, looking at nutrition, you know, we really need to kind of simplify, that's a big topic, but simplify it and to say, you know what, I don't want to reach for the chips. If I'm really hungry, let me reach for the fruit, let me reach for the veggies. <laughs> um, you know, what are the things I can simply add in and making sure that I'm not, um, you know, just turning to well, beer and pizza, I have nothing against beer and pizza, but also just thinking about, you know, if it's a, like, I don't want to cook tonight because I'm having a hard day, go for it. If that's seven days a week, is that really setting you up to feel your best and to, you know, be able to do the things you want to do? So, you know, be honest with yourself about what that nutrition needs to look like. Um, you know, some of the other things, exercise, movement, the movement component is really thinking about 10 minutes of every hour, get up and move and whatever, you know, whatever your space allows up and down your stairs or, or outside around the block or whatever the case is. And then thinking about the exercise piece, that is really, I encourage folks to try for half an hour a day, um, something that gets your heart rate up. You know, there's lots of outside winter activities right now. I'm not sure where everybody's coming from, but there's lots of snow where I am. So we've got some, uh, you know, snow-based activities. Um, that's all different from fitness, right? It's not about trying to improve your strength, et cetera. It's about trying to shift your mood and your mind by moving your body. Yes. I have someone who, uh, a friend of mine who was a, uh, kinesiologist and she said, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to think about it as working out. You have to think about it as moving mm -hmm. and movement sure. is medicine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just, you know, I, I try to make things practical when we talk about self care, because we don't need it or want it to feel like one more thing I've got to deal with. So, you know, those seven pillars, nutrition, hydration, exercise and movement, um, sleep, definitely, that can be affected when we have a change in well, in anything, but especially something that's really stressful. Um, some of the other things people kind of laugh at. Um, one of my pillars is actually joy. And so I encourage people to find whatever their joy triggers are. So those are the things I'm not suggesting we're going to ignore whatever we're having a hard time with. But if we sit under that really kind of dark cloud all the time, that's so hard. So even if we can find five minutes where something that brings you joy shifts you slightly, then it can really help kind of build a little bit of momentum. So for example, um, I live right next to a park. We have a skating rink out there right now and I can hear the kids laughing or in the summer, you know, when we're outside, I can hear the kids at recess. There's a school close to us too. And that's definitely one of the things that's just great. And I'll pause and say, okay, you know what? Maybe this is a hard day, a hard time, but the sound of kids laughing is going to help to make me feel a little bit better, right? I mean, if you have a pet, you know, <laughs> snuggle up with your pet or snuggle up with a partner or whatever the case is, right? What are the triggers that you know that will help you feel better even just for a few moments? You know, my yeah. uh, young, my oldest son 
yeah. had brain surgery in 2018. Right. And yes, he, he was nine months without this chunk of his skull. He was wow. five weeks in uh, sick kids in Toronto and then five weeks in a rehab hospital. And he had to wear a helmet, mm. like a Darth Vader helmet for right. nine months. Wow. And a friend of mine asked me, asked him, went out for lunch mm. and my son came, you know, how do you deal with this? And he said, yeah. I deal with the bad things when I have to. And then I, you know, spend as much time doing the things that make me happy. Mm. And I thought, well, you know. Out of the mouths of babes, right? That kid teaches me yeah. more than wow. I can figure out myself. But he's absolutely right. Yeah. Find the things that make you happy yeah. and do them and don't feel bad about doing them. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And that's another whole component, right? When we have a job loss, um, you know, there is a grieving process. And I think sometimes people go, oh, that sounds, it's not as bad as losing someone. Um, but then it kind of undermines or it minimizes the the pain and the discomfort and the um, really hard time, <clears throat> pardon me, that people have when they lose a job. Like, you know, there's a grieving process because it might have been how you identified yourself. It might have been. And you know what? That's OK. Again, be kind to yourself. And if you're feeling really low about that, that is OK. And if you're not feeling low about it and if you're laughing because, you know, somebody said something silly, then lean into the laugh. Right. So it is about kind of riding that roller coaster. Um Another roller coaster, and amongst the other things we've been dealing with, I know is really hard, but we need to be kinder to ourselves and we need to be kinder to those around us too. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it is a grieving process. Some of the people yeah. I know who've recently lost their jobs have had them for 30 years. Wow. Um, you know, I have friends who've lost their job at TSN. And when you work at mm -hmm. a place like that, that has such a strong brand, and if you love sports and right. people get excited to talk to you about it, you have yep. lost part of yourself. Right. Yep. And it's so important, though, to stop and say, you know, if that, you know, pay attention to your self-talk. So if you're now thinking, well, who who am I because I'm not this person on this show or whatever the case is, you know, you are so much more than that. Like in case people just needed to hear that, you are so much more than your job. And there is time to kind of maybe reflect and lean into that and say, what do I really want to do? So again, take it as an opportunity. What did I really want to do? What else did I want to do? What else could I do, right? So it is about paying attention to when we get into those really spirally kind of pieces of that self-talk, which lower our mood, which stop us moving, which have us coping with unhealthy habits, right? So it's figuring something to help break that spiral, right? Switch in your self-talk or, you know, movement, the things we've talked about. Um, some of the other things, I encourage people regularly to plan something that's fun something that's silly, something that is, and I know we're like, really, that kind of goes back to like, is this a bubble bath? No, it's not. That's not what I'm talking about. But if you have something to look forward to, right, again, something that gives you a 10 minute, 30 minute reprieve from the challenges, it helps to shift the way that our body and our mind and our mood is, right? And we pair enough of those little things together. And soon enough, we start to feel momentum towards things that are going to help us move forward. Yeah, I mean, I've had different parts in my life where things that identified me were taken mm -hmm. away. Yeah. You know, for me, it started, uh, you know, in high school, I was uh, captain of the football team and valedictorian and did the announcements. Mm. I, I had some profile and I went away to university, yeah. didn't know anybody. Yeah. And so you have to ask yourself, who am I now mm -hmm. now that I don't have the things that used to define me? And that actually yeah. is a valuable process. You can come out totally. a much better person Absolutely. through that introspection. Yeah, because like we said, and again, not to go too spiritual here, but, you know, we are, we are not our jobs. We are not our so-and-so's mom. We are, I mean, we, we are at the same time, but that's not all we are, right? And so to say, you know, when my husband lost his job, he was let go in 2009 and we had little kids. I was working part-time and it, it was scary and it was awful and all of those things. And he was working in an office and in his in an office by himself, which doesn't suit him at all. He's, you know, a pre people person. He's designed to move. He's, And so what it led to was, yes, a year of struggle and then something that he's much happier doing. So, again, I empathize with how hard it is to go through that. But you know what? We don't grow in a comfort zone. We don't if we're really comfortable and kind of like, yeah, this is great we don't move along. And so now to say, this is the opportunity to find something new, to do something new, to serve in a different way and become what I didn't even know I wanted, or I didn't think that I could become. Right. So 
I get it. It's hard. And you know what, folks, you, you're going to do it, right? You've reinvented yourself before. You've changed. You've been able to accommodate. Goodness, you've made it through this pandemic, right? So you're going to be able to make it through whatever it is that's, um, you know, in front of you now. One of the things that I keep saying about this is you're on a journey. You're mm -hmm. on a journey. And you, I think it helps to look at it that way. Yeah. Rather than you're stuck in a spot, you're on yeah. a continuum. And one of the best ways to help you along that journey is to take care of yourself. Uh -huh. And that means hydrating, uh -huh. that means exercise, that means movement, that yeah. means finding things that make you happy and doing them. And uh -huh. that means more than anything, as you said, be kind to yourself. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Deanna, thank you so much. Your contact information, if people want to get a hold of you, is mm -hmm. below this. I know that awesome. you offer a, a session where people can talk to you and find out what you do and how you yeah. can help them. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, and on my website, there's a blog, there's some free resources on there for folks. I know finances are really tricky for some people. So there's some free resources there. There's a, you know, free call option. And then, you know, there are other ways that we can connect and I can support as well. So please don't hesitate to reach out if I might be of service. Uh, I've known Deanna about a year since I started yeah, uh, yeah. pushing my journey a little bit more towards <laughs> my own business, uh, less freelancing and more business stuff. And yes. I can tell you that Deanna is a good hearted, sincere person who cares <laughs> deeply about what she does. And that's why she does it. Thank you. So, and, and you as well, putting this whole, uh, you know, series together to support folks for sure. Uh, been there. All right, yeah. Deanna, thank you so much. Thank you.